Silent Hill Homecoming was released in 2008 for all North American players and in European regions three months later. It's widely regarded as the worst game in the franchise, but we're more concerned with how to play it on PC. So let's explore the three releases, including the Windows, Xbox and PS3 versions. Oh, oh God! Hey, hey, what are they doing? What's going on there? Hey, where are you taking me? The Windows version would normally be unplayable on modern systems, but at least we have the unknown project patch, which fixes most of the issues plaguing the game. It raises the resolution ceiling to 4K, improves the frame rate to 60, fixes the widescreen and improves the stability on Windows 10 or later. Having said that, there are still issues. Firstly, there is no way to enable VSync, so you'll have to use your GPU control panel to activate. Secondly, the unknown project removes the quick time events. For some of you this is a welcome change, but for others this may be a deal breaker. However, 15 minutes into my playthrough, I noticed that my character spoke very softly. Here. I want Robbie. I had to really concentrate to hear what he was saying, and it was very annoying. Apparently, it's a bug that's been part of the game since launch, so it's just something you'll have to bear. But the biggest problem is the crashing. I experienced two crashes to desktop during loading screens, which meant I had to redo a lot of unsaved work. This is not how I want to play a game. The Xbox version is emulated on Xenia, and for the most part I'm happy with this version. It certainly ran much more stable than the Windows version. It had minor visual glitches though. It seems the post-processing effects aren't always rendering properly. It is darker than the Windows version by default, but you can increase the brightness in the options. The only real issue is the broken fog. You see it most often during cutscenes, although it is sometimes noticeable in actual gameplay as well. The PS3 version is emulated on a PCS3. Some of you may be thinking it should be the best way to play. After all, the PS3 version had superior fog effects when compared to Windows and Xbox. And you can patch the PS3 version to run at 60 frames, as well as remove the noise filter. This is good. However, raising the frame rate could add noticeable audio crackles, especially if the game can't maintain solid performance. So only use the frame patch if you have a very high-end computer. Even so, the emulator can't run the game above 720p. I tried cranking the resolution to 1440p and it didn't make a difference, so it's no better than Zinnia in that regard. I also discovered severe sound issues during cutscenes. Listen for yourself. No, I haven't talked to her. Actually, I haven't really talked to anyone. I'm not planning on sticking around for long. Oh. Well. It's clear that there's lots of crackling, and the lip syncing is delayed by some margin. I'm not saying this makes the game unplayable, but it certainly pushes it down a few pegs. None of the three versions are perfect, but if you held a gun to my head and forced me to choose, I would go with Zinnia. The broken fog effect, while annoying, is not a deal breaker for me. I may do an update video in the future, but I think this is where I'm going to leave it. Doing comparisons would be pointless in this case. Anyway, if you found this video useful, please remember to give a like. It really helps with the algorithm. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.